everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Nod. So tell me, <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so thank you for joining us today. We're so happy to have you here. And um, congratulations on Golden Grads Weekend. What a wonderful achievement. Um, and we wish you were here in person. You know, that's always a wonderful weekend here. Um, the time of year, but you know, th th that'll come now, once you're a golden grad, you're always a golden grad. So you can come, you can come cont continually every year from this point forward. So, um, today, Laurie Bowater and I, we're from the office of gift planning, as Ashley mentioned, I'm the director of gift planning and we're just going to talk to you quickly about 20 minutes of presentation, prepared remarks. And then we left about 10 minutes for Q and a, um, on just tax wise giving with retirement plans. Like, um, Ashley said, we're in the office of gift planning. So we see a lot of different types of gifts comes through and these types of gifts have definitely, um, become very, very prominent in the type of gifts that we receive. Um, so we have a syllabus from professor Husky for today. Um, our syllabus, um, is we're going to go through some rules regarding the legislation. Um, some things that you, you know, some history regarding how, how these things came to be. Um, the math. So those of you who are afraid of math, we're going to go through some of those math, how the math works. Um, the gift, you know, the qualified charitable distribution and then um, legacy, um, you know, what, what this means for the future of Northeastern. And then we have some take home thoughts. So um, Laurie Bowater from my team is going to start it off and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to um, jump back in. So Laurie, you can take it from here. All right. Thanks, Patty. And uh, let me add my welcome to Patty's. It's great mm -hmm. to have you all with us. We thought it would be a good idea to begin today's lesson with a little history to frame the conversation. Private pension plans have been around in various forms since the early 1890s and have actually been regulated since the early 1920s. But in 1963, two big events drew attention to pension plan mismanagement and corruption. The first was the epic pension plan fund collapse of the Studebaker Packard Automotive Manufacturing Plant in South Bend, Indiana, that saw the pensions for roughly 4,000 workers slashed or denied entirely. The second was the high profile conviction of Teamsters boss, Jimmy Hoffa, on among other things, fraud and conspiracy with Teamster pensions. It took about 10 years, but in 1974, Congress passed the Employee Retirement Income Security Act, ERISA, which required plans to be financially transparent, adhered to a strict code of conduct, and report to the Department of Labor every year. And it also created the Individual Retirement Arrangement, or account, the IRA, in order to give those without retirement plan coverage at work a tax advantage means to save for retirement and to preserve employer-sponsored plan assets by allowing them to be transferred into IRAs when employees retired or changed jobs and allowed that plan investment income to grow tax deferred. So the IRA, which was originally offered strictly through banks, became instantly popular with contributions of 1.4 billion in that first year. And the next slide, Patty. Uh, so subsequent legislation brought us variations of the IRA with the SEP IRA, simple IRAs, the 401k, 403b, the 457b governmental plan, uh, profit sharing plans, and other defined contribution plans. What they all have in common is the plan investment income grows tax deferred, but it can't stay there forever. Required minimum distributions apply, and with few exceptions are mandatory at age 72. Now this was increased from age 70 and a half through the SECURE Act, which was passed in late 2019. And that distribution is taxed as, at ordinary income, which is the highest taxable rate. And the next screen, here we go to the math. Generally, a required minimum distribution is calculated for each account by dividing the prior December 31st balance of that IRA or retirement plan account by the life expectancy factor that the IRS publishes in three different tables. You choose the life expectancy table to use based on your situation, or you can ask your plan administrator what that amount will be. And most plan providers have a calculator on their website to make sure, or to make this easy for you, you just plug in your age and the balance of your account from the previous December 31st. And if you have more than one tax deferred retirement account, this number is the sum of all of your account balances on December 31st last year, excuse me, divided by that life expectancy factor. And the next screen. And this is an example uh, from the IRS website showing one of the tables utilized most often by plan owners. This is the uniform lifetime table. And you can find this easily by just going to Google and plugging in IRS RMD table and links will bring you to this worksheet. Okay, next one. I think Patty, you take it from here. 
Sure. So, all right. So you, so you made it through already. You got through the math <laughs> and you got through the history. And we just give that to you to put things in context. Um, it's not anything that, um, that we expect you to remember. We're going to test you on, but we just wanted to you know these things have developed over time. And so, and what are we talking about today? Um, we're talking about um, qualified charitable distribution. So in 2016, a law was made permanent that allowed for individuals to give any amount up to $100,000 a year from an individual retirement account, so from your IRA, directly to a qualifying charity um, without having to pay any income taxes on that money, which it's a wonderful benefit. And um, what this really means is that traditional IRA owners can use their required minimum distributions that Laurie just talked about, those required minimum distributions that you have to take, you're required to take. And you can actually elect to do a qualified charitable distribution to actually give money to charity. And what are the requirements for that? Um, there's obviously there's some rules associated with that. You have to be at least 70 and a half years old. You know, so you've accumulated these assets in your IRA accounts over your lifetime. And then when you reach age 70 and a half years old, you can actually take a qualified charitable distribution. It's only allowed from traditional IRA accounts. So Laurie mentioned earlier the, four, the development of the 401k, the 403b. Those are all plans that all of you are probably familiar with if you've worked. You probably have contributed to your 401k or your 403b plan um, throughout your lifetime. The, uh, the qualified charitable distribution is only allowed from an IRA. But if you have those other types of accounts, there actually is a way to accomplish this. You probably, if you have these other accounts, uh, you probably might have one, two, or three of them. You know, you had one, two, or three of them in your lifetime, and you probably have already decided to bring all of your assets together in an IRA account at Fidelity or wherever you've chosen. So you've already done what's called a rollover from a 401k or a 403b to an IRA. So that's the step that you would need to take. You would need to move those assets to an IRA first, and then you can take advantage of the qualified charitable distribution. What are the other rules regarding this? Well, it has to be a gift, gift by check or wire sent directly to Northeastern or to whatever qualifying charity that you want. Um, and what that means is if you decide to take advantage of the QCD, you would tell your IRA administrator to make the check payable or send a wire directly to Northeastern. You cannot have the check made payable to you personally, and then after decide to make it to give to Northeastern for it to qualify. So that's a very important step. Of course, you can receive the check in the mail on your own. So you can call Fidelity and say, I want to do a QCD and I want it to be made payable to Northeastern. And then the check could be mailed to you. And then you in turn can go ahead and send that check to us. That does happen um, quite frequently. But the key is that anything has to be made payable to the qualified charity, not to you as an individual. And then there is a maximum amount per individual per year, and that's $100,000. Um, so what that means is if you would like to take advantage of the QCD, you can give any amount, um, you know, it, any amount you want up to $100,000 to take advantage of this tax benefit. If you are married and each of you, you and your spouse have your own individual retirement accounts, you each have $100,000 maximum. We receive gifts of all different sizes. So $100,000 is just, is just the maximum. And if you're still working and still contributing to your IRA, then any QCD that you would like to take would be reduced by anything that you've contributed to an IRA in that current year. So what are the benefits and, and some limitations of these types of um, QCDs are also known as qualified charitable IRA rollovers. Beginning in the year um, when you're turned 72, the year that you're required to take your minimum distribution from your retirement plans, you can actually satisfy your required minimum distribution by making a QCD. So that's a wonderful benefit. So you actually don't have to take that income personally. If you are philanthropic in nature, you wanna make a gift anyway, then you can just uh, contact your IRA administrator and say, you know what? I know I have to take my required minimum distribution this year. I actually wanna roll that amount directly to, to Northeastern um, or, or again, whoever you would like to direct it to. Um, 
and this is the other thing that's very important in this is that these distributions do not affect your taxable income. They are not counted as taxable income to you. Key, if you're taking advantage of already um, any of the Medicare plans out there and the Social Security are paying premiums or um, the amount of, it, it, you wanna pay attention to what affects your taxable income. Um, if you take the QCD, it would not affect any of the um, requirements or minimums um, for Social Security, that's what Social Security is measured against, or the Medicare premiums. Um, these gifts cannot be directed to donor advised funds or supporting organizations or private foundations. And this is very important too, because a lot of you probably have a donor advised fund or have, con have considered giving to a donor advised fund. The rule right now is that qualified charitable, dis charitable distributions cannot be rolled directly to one of these types of funds, a donor advised fund. And there's only certain um, qualified charities that fall into the category that can receive them. And we get this next question a lot. Can it be used to fund a charitable gift annuity or a charitable remainder trust? Those are some other types of charitable gifts that we see in our office. And the answer is no, they cannot be used to fund these types of gifts. So this is a picture, I'm a very visual person. So I like to see how this would work, you know, and, and you know, with a picture of it. If you look at the top of this screen, on the left-hand side, you'll see the, uh, the IRA is the piggy bank, basically. That's the accumulated assets that you have. If you decide to take advantage of the QCD to make a charitable gift, then you would roll it over directly to Northeastern. So it'll go right over, right over you, go directly to Northeastern. And then in turn, we would acknowledge that gift to you by giving you a gift receipt. Um, just to say that, yes, we have received it and you have taken advantage of the qualified charitable distribution. On the bottom of this is an example because I get this question a lot. How will this affect, you know, when I do my year-end tax reporting? Let's just say, for example, that you... Um, took an IRA distribution of 23,500. Maybe that was your required minimum distribution, but you decided to also make a, a qualified charitable, um, excuse me, the IRA distribution for 23,500 was your required minimum distribution. And you decided to do a QCD at the same time for 10,000. The way you would report it on your tax return is that on the left, the IRA distribution would be 23,500 and the taxable amount would be the difference between what you gave to Northeastern and the total amount that you received. So you would get a 1099-R, that's the tax form that you would receive from your IRA administrator, it would say 23,500. And then when you report it on your tax return, the taxable, taxable amount would be 13,500. So why should you even consider these types of gifts? Well, these only make sense if you are considering you know, doing any sort of philanthropy anyway, if you wanna make a gift. Um, and if you do, it allows you, these are considered cash outright gifts. So it would allow you to see your philanthropy in action while you're still living. Um, one of them, the, an example, and I've been working with a woman named Jane for, for many years, and um, she wanted to establish a scholarship in her name. And she um, wanted to do it for $100,000. And she thought that she would do it over a period of years. She would give us $20,000 a year over five years. And um, she was going to use her QCD to do that. And um, the, the funny thing in all this is that she would, thought for sure it was gonna take her five years to, to do this gift. But when she actually did the, did the paperwork for her first qualified charitable distribution for her, her, her RMD, act, for, for her required minimum distribution, um, she, her, required, her first required minimum distribution was for over $40,000. She, over her lifetime had accumulated so much assets in these, these plans and they do, they build up quickly over time. It's, it's quite amazing what, you've, what you can um, build up in, in, in your lifetime of, you know, of working and if you've consistently given to your retirement plans. So her first required minimum distribution was $46,000, which we received last year. It was her first installment of her um, est establishing a scholarship. And then this year we just actually received the second um, installment and it was for over $60,000. And that's, that's because it's her required minimum distribution. So she was thrilled that she could actually meet the requirement for her scholarship at $100,000 um, you know, within two years and it's a nursing scholarship. So we're gonna be able to award that scholarship next year. And it's just wonderful for us to be able to work with individuals and see that actually happen during their lifetime. But the key in all this is actually it's a flexible amount. So I'm talking, you know, large numbers, $100,000 because, you know, QCDs can actually you know, be, but they can be any amount. They can be anything from 
you know, hundred dollars to a hundred thousand dollars. It really depends. Carolyn Buckley Cooper, who's in our office, she processes these gifts and we get, we get hundreds of them every year. Um, and they're for all various amounts and there you can direct them to anywhere you want them to go at the university. And if they, and if you happen to have a larger amount and you want to think about establishing some sort of, um, a scholarship, then we would talk to you about that, you know, and, and work with you to see how that actually would work. Um, and then on the bottom, um, the last bullet point, again, you're not paying income taxes on these um, distributions. You're not getting a charitable deduction for them because again, they're getting moved directly from your tax deferred plan to charity. So you're not gonna get a double benefit from that, but you actually, but it's, it's a very wonderful tax um, benefit to be able to not, just not even include it in your income. Um, and even if you don't itemize, you know, a lot of deductions that you're able to claim, you have to itemize your deductions. But for these, because you're, it's not even being taken into consideration when you're filing your taxes, um, you don't have to itemize um, on your tax returns to take, it, to take advantage of the benefit. Again, and just another visual, the top is if you take your required minimum distribution, you know, without doing a charitable gift initially, you can see the piggy bank on the left is the IRA. And then you take your required minimum distribution and then you have to pay taxes to the IRS you receive the check um, and then you can later on decide to make a gift, it's up to you. You know, it's a very individual decision. If you decide later on to make a gift to Northeastern, we would give you a tax receipt for that. Versus on the bottom, if you take advantage of the rollover, then it would go directly from your IRA to Northeastern. And then we would give you what's called a gift receipt. Basically the difference between those two is the tax receipt is what we would use actually to claim a deduction versus on the bottom, a gift receipt just acknowledges that gift. You need both when you're filing your taxes, you should make sure you keep both of them. And then some of the other um, ways to uh, make gifts to retirement plans. Um, if you are age 59 and a half or older, you can actually start drawing down on your retirement plans without a penalty from the IRS. And that penalty is 10%. So if you are 59, or old, 59 and a half or older and you wanna start, um, drawing down on your, on your retirement plans and you wanna make a charitable gift, you can certainly do that. And then you can claim a charitable income tax deduction for that gift. That's separate from a QCD because the QCD has the, the age requirement of 70 and a half. At any age, you can name Northeastern as a beneficiary of a retirement plan, um, as, as an IRA, a 401k, a 403b, that's pretty simple to do. You just fill out paperwork or you can even do it online and you just name Northeastern as a beneficiary. We, we receive a lot of gifts that way. Um, and what I will say regarding this is if you're looking at your overall portfolio and you're trying to figure out how you're going to, you know, um, distribute your assets at your death and you are philanthropically inclined and you want to include philanthropy in some way and make a gift to the, you know, certain charities. In most cases, if you have these retirement plans, then, um, your advisors will direct you to leave these types of assets to charity and leave other assets to your heirs. And the reason for that is Northeastern as a charity does not pay taxes. So when, if we receive this type of gift, it would come to us tax-free versus if you receive the, if you decide to leave these types of gifts to your heirs, um, your family members or friends, um, they would have to pay taxes on them and they would happen most likely have to pay at the ordinary income rates, the highest tax rates. So if you're trying to figure out what's the most tax efficient way to give and you have these types of plans, then most likely giving your retirement assets to charity is the most tax efficient way to give. And then on the bottom, many individuals actually do a, do a combination of these types of gifts. They start receiving, you know, they've decided to use um, the QCD to satisfy, satisfy the required minimum distribution. And they start making gifts to us now during their lifetime. And then at their death, they also name um, Northeast as a beneficiary of their retirement plans. So it's a, it's a way to give during your lifetime to see your gift in action, and then at the end, make that much larger impactful gift um, to continue your legacy. And then if you've included Northeastern in, in any in your retirement plans as a beneficiary or in your estate plans in any way, we please um, please let us know. And the reason is we we love our Frank Palmer Spear Society. That's our legacy society. You can see a picture of one of our more recent events here. Um, this was a luncheon that we did at the Endicott Estates out in um, in um, the Dedham area. And we had if you, I don't know if you can see in the middle. There's Dan Kennedy. He's one of the professors here at Northeastern. He did a um, he's from Beat the Press, and he did a presentation on his um, recent book that he wrote. And it really, we try to do these events once a year. Um, we at least do once a year event. And then sometimes we do a second event. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's a great way to stay in contact and connect with other Northeastern grads, alums and friends. 
and we um and we just love we just love to know about it. So um and, and we have a lot of fun with our Legacy Society members. And as always, I have to put the disclaimer out there. Um, it, this presentation should not be considered legal, accounting, or tax advice. Um, we and here are a um, here are a confidential resource to you to help guide you through and explore certain gift scenarios and if they make sense. But we always, always, always recommend that you talk with your own advisors. Every situation is um, specific and individual to you. So we just want to make sure that you're getting the right advice that, that makes the most sense for you. And here's the pictures of Laurie and I um, and our contact information. We're happy to um, answer any questions that you may have now. And if you, um, if you later on, if you come up with a question and you wanna you know, reach out and talk to us, we're happy to um, talk with you. Here's our contact. And then down the bottom is also the link to our website where you can get a lot of great information um, and you know, get some of your questions answered there as well. So that's the, that's the end of our quick presentation. Um, we try to keep it you know, uh, short and sweet because we know you're busy. Um, but if you have any questions, we'd be happy to answer those now. And I, I, I think there may be some questions in the chat. Yes, thank you so much for that presentation. It was wonderful. Um, so I'm going to read the questions aloud. Um, the first one is, can you please just remind us the beginning and end dates of NU's fiscal year? Yes, um, our fiscal year goes from July 1st to June 30th. Perfect. Um, mm -hmm. And then another question, how do I go about making a gift from my IRA? So the great question, how do you do this? Um, what's the practical solution? Um, you would need to contact your IRA administrator. Um, you can do it, over, so you can call them or you can go online. And what they will do is they will have a protocol that they want you to follow. Typically it's paperwork. And, um, and part, of, part of that paperwork is you would decide that you would, um, you wanna direct your gift to Northeastern. Um, so usually you have to, you know, write Northeastern and then you would have to um, put in our tax ID number, which is on our website, or we can give that to you um, and, and mail it to have it sent directly to us and we and provide the contact information as well. We also have a letter, a standard letter that we can supply you to just send to your IRA administrator that gives them that says basically that you want to take advantage of the qualified charitable distribution and you want to direct funds to Northeastern and has all the um, pertinent information that, that you would need. Patty, can I interject one thing too? Sure. Um, it's also important that you give permission to be identified as the donor because your bank will not do that without your permission. So do that. Otherwise we have to try to figure out who it is. <laughs> who it's from. Yeah. yeah, we do get some that we have to kind of do yeah. some, you know, some sleuthing to, to figure out who it is. So if you right. let us know in advance too, that's, that's important. If you're thinking about doing this, just give us a call or reach out. And th what that does is it allows us to, to be on the lookout for it. And then we can just let you know when we receive it. It's good to know. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Great. So, and do you send a tax receipt when um, people send in their donations through this charitable contribution? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we have a specific, um, it's for qualified charitable distri um, charitable distribution, the QCD. It's actually called the gift acknowledgement. Basically um, it, what it does is it, 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 it's, it's the receipt that you need to file with, with the IRS, but it's, in the, it's, it's an acknowledgement letter. You will get a, the tax form you'll get the tax receipt is from your IRA administrator. So they give you the tax receipt and basically it's the 1099 form that says that you took, you, you took money out of your IRA and we complement that with our gift receipt notification. Great. And if I want to write a check um, directly from my IRA account, is there anything else I need to know about that? Yes, you, um, you can certainly do that, but we just the key regarding that is um, at the end of, if you're getting close to the end of the year, there's a timing thing that needs to happen to make sure that we actually get the check and can cash it before 1231. So make sure you give yourself ample time to get it in the mail and get it to us so that we can cash it so that you can include it for your taxes for that. Yeah, and we are starting to, year. We, are, we are starting to see that people that have um, check writing privileges for their IRAs, but not everybody does. So, but mm -hmm. in that situation, they need to, to plan for time. Plan for time. Yeah. And where should those checks be sent? Um, to your office? Yes. So I'm going to go to the next screen. Great. And you can see here, um, this Carolyn Buckley Cooper, who's, who's our rock star, who processes all of these gifts. She's very busy at the end of the calendar year. Um, she um, she uh, is the person to direct these to. And, um, and she's the one who makes sure that you also get your gift receipt for them. Great. 
All right. I think that those are all the questions that I see, unless there's any others. Um, if folks would like to put them in the chat box or we have a small group. So if you want to unmute and ask that question, that's fine as well. All right. All right. Well, thank does you the, so oh. Yeah, does the uh, the way you do this transfer change if you have if you're funding a scholarship fund? No, the, the only key thing is that you just let us know that that's where you want it to go. So um, in your case, if you have a scholarship fund, um, if you have one already established, then you would just need to let us know, just reach out and let us know I'm sending in my QCD and I want it to go to the, you know, my scholarship. If you want to establish a new scholarship, we just ask that you reach out to us and then we can talk you through the process because we want to make sure we get the right paperwork in place to do that. Does that I answer your would, question? I would just like to say that I've dealt with the uh, um, Office of Gift Planning and it's always been a pleasure <laughs> to deal with both Patricia and Laura. <laughs> very, very able and very pleasant and very approachable. So uh -huh. thank you for being you. Oh, thank you so much, Jean. Yeah, we, we, we really, in all sincerity, we love what we do. Um, we love helping people make gifts and, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun for us. And um, we really get to meet some wonderful people. We get to hear their stories and, you know, from when they came to Northeastern and beyond, or maybe they didn't come to Northeastern at all, but maybe they just heard about us in some way and appreciate all that we've done for the community. There's a variety of reasons why people get to Northeastern, but ultimately it just gives us a lot of um, satisfaction and pleasure to work with individuals and help them see their philanthropy in action. So it's, it's, a, it's yeah. a lot of fun, but thank you, Jean. We've enjoyed working with you too. I didn't realize you're gonna be on here. So <laughs> it's good to see you. <laughs> Any other questions? Well, as, as Jean said, we're very approachable. And honestly, even if you just want to explore giving, if you've never given a gift before and you just want to explore it, we're happy to have a conversation with you. It's confidential and help guide you. Whether you make a gift to Northeastern or not, it's, it's really, you know, it, it's, we'd love you to make a gift to Northeastern, but we're here to help regardless. And I, 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 while, I'm on my, while I have your um, ear for one more minute, I would just say, everyone, please think about um, your estate planning, regardless, again, if you make a gift or not. It's very important to look at your at any of your estate planning, um, at least annually, to, to make sure that ultimately all this, all that you've accumulated throughout your lifetime, all your hard work um, is, is, goes ultimately in, to where you want it to go. So with that, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was wonderful to talk to all of you. And if you um, want to reach out, please do so. We'd love to hear from you. And enjoy the rest of Golden Grads. You know, congratulations. Thanks for joining us.